All right, folks. Just want to do a quick video here on the top 10 bug out bag mistakes that most people make. So we're going to go over the 10 things that uh, we see people uh, make mistakes about when putting together a bug out bag. Um, but before we go into that, I want to talk a little bit about what it means to bug out. And uh, from my perspective, and for the perspective of this discussion, we're going to define bugging out as leaving your home or other safe location because conditions have deteriorated or are deteriorating to the point where you would be better off somewhere else. And this is because of an STHF type situation. It could be a hurricane, it could be a grid down, it could be Al-Qaeda showed up in the neighborhood. Um, that somewhere else that you're going to be going to is a predetermined location. It's not the woods behind Walmart, it's not the local park, it's not your buddy's house across the street. Um, it's assumed that you're going to leave your current location for good. So what you need to do is you need to plan your provisions assuming that you're never going to return. Not because you don't want to return, but because you can't return. You need to plan on how you're going to get to this location. That plan needs to include multiple routes. And if you plan to travel by a vehicle, a bicycle, or even a damn horse, you need to make sure that you can get to that location on foot as well. So if your bug out location is 600 miles away, good luck getting there. So for the sake of this discussion, we're going to assume it's going to take you 72 hours to reach your location by foot. Um, if it's going to take you longer, then you're just going to need to adjust your provisions. That's going to be supplies, gear, food, water. Um, and it's also really important to consider your local climate and weather patterns. So if you're going to cut through the desert, you probably don't need a parka. You probably don't need a wool blanket. So here we go talking about the mistakes. The first mistake that uh, I see people making is, is they pack the wrong stuff. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have a list of items that you need to support your journey to your predetermined location. And that is gear that you know how to use. It supports your skills and you can carry it. Don't pack stuff because it's cool. Like night vision binoculars, solar powered vans, <laughs> or, uh, or like crazy lanterns that, that play music. You want to make sure that you're packing stuff that uh, makes sense and is usable. Don't pack stuff because someone said to pack that stuff. Just because an entertainer on YouTube or somebody who's popular said to pack a certain type of gear, um, don't do it. Um, don't pack sleeping systems or clothes that aren't specific to your region or climate. And we kind of talked about that. Like if you're in moderate temperate climate, you don't need a zero degree bag. Um, the other one is, is giant knives. I'm not telling you don't pack a big knife or pack a big chopper, but... Uh, the point of bugging out is to get from point A to point B quickly and undetected. You don't want to take a two and a half foot chopper. You don't want to take a monster knife that you're going to be out in the woods banging on trees, creating a bunch of noise. And, and the reason you use those big choppers anyway are to build shelters. And you're not going to want to spend time building shelters. If you have time to build a shelter, you use that time to get from point A to point B. You want a shelter that you can put up quickly, easily, tear down, and leave no trace. The second thing that uh, we see people doing is making a bag that's way too heavy. Um, you've got to be able to carry this bag for a long distance for multiple days. Most people don't have any experience doing this. And the people that do have experience about doing this usually have done it years ago. You want a bag that you can hike 15, 20 miles a day with, without uh, wearing yourself out, without hurting yourself, without injuring yourself. So people like to pack a bunch of ammo. Like You'll see videos where guys are packing 500 rounds of 9mm. That's too much. Um, you'll see videos where people are packing tons of canned goods, too many clothes, or non-functional gear. Um, my favorite is I saw a video where a guy had a damn lint roller and a solar calculator. If you're trying to get from point A to point B, you don't have time to be standing around cleaning yourself up with a lint roller. Um, the last thing is cast iron cookware. I think I saw one where the guy had a uh, cast iron frying pan. You want something that's light. You don't want your bag too heavy. And then you don't want answers to every what if scenario. You don't want to, what if there's a tornado or what if there's a flood? I need a raft. You, you want to be able to get, you want high speed, low drag, get from point A to point B undetected quickly as possible. The, uh, the third mistake that we see 
are people that pack too many redundant tools. So too many knives. You know, I've got a folder knife. I've got a backup to my folder knife. I've got a knife on my multi-tool. I've got a chopper. I've got a fixed blade. I've got a small forest axe, and I've got a and I, and I have a big <laughs> double bit axe. Whatever. You, you, I have saws, I got a buck saw, folding saw. You want to make sure that you have the tools that you're going to need to traverse the terrain that you have to cover. And that might be a small folder, it might be a multi-tool, it might be a fixed blade, but don't take a bunch of things that you're not going to use. Uh, too many ways to purify water. You'll see videos where guys have four or five different water filters. They'll have the ability to boil water. They'll have tablets. They'll, they'll have a million different ways to, to purify water. Purifying water is great. And purifying water is important. But let's real, be realistic. You're not going to be purifying the ocean on a 72-hour trek. Um, the other one I, I was going to mention is, is that some folks have too many cooking options. They'll have pots and pans and esbit stoves and... Uh, stoves that burn twigs and gas stoves and jet boils. You want a few ways that you can heat up water and you can heat up food as quickly, as easily as possible. But frankly, most of your food options would be things like jerky, power bars, uh, gels, things that you can eat quickly and easily on the move. You're not going to be out there cooking a Christmas dinner. Um, the other one is too many flashlights. People... I've got a headlamp, I've got my 4D cell mag light, I've got my pocket torch, I've got my backup torch, I've got my button light. You just want to make sure that you have the illumination stuff that you need. One or two flashlights per person, that's it. Uh, the other thing is, is that people don't pack enough stuff. So you'll see people that don't have enough food and they think that they're going to hunt or bushcraft their way and find wild edibles as they go. Um, you don't want to do that. You probably want to have somewhere around 3,500 calories per person per day. You burn a lot of calories when you're traveling. You may even want more than that. Uh, people don't pack first aid or enough first aid. You need to make sure that you have the things to take care of an injury, whether it's a mechanical injury like a sprain or a twisted ankle or a broken bone. Uh, you want to be able to take care of bleeding if you get cut or sliced or, or scraped. And you want to make sure that you also have first aid in the form of painkillers, pain control, and then things for upset stomachs and anti-diarrheals. Um, the other one is people might not have adequate sleep systems. The one thing that you're going to want to do is when you are sleeping, you want to get a meaningful rest. So you do want to be comfortable. And then the other thing that people don't pack a lot of times is a repair kit. You want to have a kit on you that allows you to maintain your boots, your clothes, your gear, your tent your knives, whatever flashlights, whatever you have, you should have the means to fix or maintain that, that stuff. Um, the other mistake, mistake number five that, that we see people making is they pack stuff that they've never used. So you'll see somebody that has a telescoping fishing rod or they'll have some sort of collapsible folding buck saw or they'll have um, just knives or multi-tools or stoves that have zero use on them. Um, when you're in a hurry and conditions have deteriorated to the point where you have to rapidly get from A to B, you don't want to figure out how to use your stove. You don't want to figure out how to put up your tent for the first time. You want things that go up easy, easy to use, no fuss, no muss. Um, number six, people pack stuff that sucks. You don't want to pack stuff that sucks. You want to pack good quality gear that's going to facilitate your traveling. Uh, one of the things is cheap gear. I'm not talking about value gear. Like a Mora knife is a value knife. It's not a cheap knife. I'm talking just about cheap gear that sucks. You're buying a flashlight for a buck as you're going through the food lion uh, checkout counter. That probably sucks. You probably don't want to take that with you. You want to you want to take gear that's dependable that you can rely on and is not going to fail. You don't want to take the two dollar knife from Walmart. That thing sucks. Um, you don't want to take complex gear. We talked about this a little bit. Like you don't want a Sven saw that requires two wing nuts or a buck saw that requires you to put a million pieces together. You want something like a Laplander. You fold it open, you saw through what you need to saw through, and you want to get out of there. You don't want gear with a lot of parts, and you don't want things that require significant assembly or disassembly. And that can be some of these tents with flies and vestibules and all that stuff. Just take a tarp. If the weather's nice, sleep under the stars. The seventh mistake that folks make is they don't maintain, or they don't update their bag. That means maintaining your gears. If you have high carbon knives, take them out, make sure they're sharp, make sure they're oiled up, make sure they're ready to go. Make sure your batteries are charged, make sure your food hasn't expired, make sure that your medicine hasn't expired. Restock any used items if your bug out bag is a usable kit that you take on camping trips and hiking trips. Number eight, 
is not packing maps or orienteering gear. Um, you need to be able to tell where you are. You need to be able to tell where you're going. You need to be able to tell what kind of terrain you're going to traverse because you need to be able to estimate your travel times. A compass and some local maps is a great way to do that. You have to make sure that you know how to use those as well. Um, the ninth mistake that we see people making is not taking climate or weather patterns into consideration. If you're in the Pacific Northwest, you're going to need dry bags. You're going to need a way to cover your backpack so it doesn't get wet. You're going to need ponchos and you're going to need tarps. If you're in a desert, you're probably going to need sunscreen. If you're in Florida, you're going to need bug spray. You just need to make sure that you have things that are specific to your location. Don't go off a checklist of 10 items that you need to have from a YouTube personality, or from Red Cross, or anybody else. Make sure that you have things that you know you need that are specific to where you live and where you'll be traveling. The 10th uh, the thing, and probably the biggest thing, is uh, buying the wrong bag. People buy the wrong bags. A lot of times folks will buy a bag because it's on sale or because it looks cool or because a popular personality on a YouTube said, hey, buy this particular brand. After you made your list and you have begun to gather the items that you will carry, that's when you start looking at bags. If possible, you want to go to stores and you want to try out different bags. Buying a bag without being able to see, touch, hold them, it can lead to disappointment. And you may get something other than what you expected. And some of these bags, let's face it, are $100, $150, $200. You want to make sure that your bag is durable and comfortable. You want to make sure that it has good zippers, it has good straps, it has good buckles, it's made out of thick nylon. And I'm not saying that you need to buy a name brand or you need to buy an expensive bag. You need to buy a quality bag that you can maintain. And then in terms of comfort, you need to make sure that you can put the amount of weight in there that you're going to be putting in there and it doesn't have pain points on your shoulder, it doesn't hurt your back, the belt fits around your waist, you can clip the chest buckle. You want to make sure that it, it fits you and it's comfortable and you can use that to carry significant weight, significant distances, further than you walk every day, carrying more than you carry every day. Otherwise, you're going to have problems. You're going to be hurt. You're going to be injured. You're going to be fatigued, right? You don't want that. Um, and then the next thing is, is you want to make sure that your bag can hold all the things that you want. You don't want to bag, buy a bag that's too small and then have to tie a bunch of stuff on the outside of the bag. You don't want to buy a bag that's too big and then you have all this unusable space and excess weight in terms of the bag. So these are what I consider to be the top 10 mistakes that most people make. And I'm sure there's a number of other mistakes and I'm sure there's a bunch of mistakes that I just made laying out those 10 mistakes. Um, these are just the ones that I think are most common when I watch YouTube videos or I read articles or I look at checklists. So go ahead and comment below and tell me if you agree or disagree. Tell me what mistakes you've made or what mistakes you've seen other people see, uh, you've, that you've seen other people make. Um, that's really it, and I just want to say thanks for watching.